IRA members knew the price of betrayal, torture at the hands of their comrades and a brutal execution. He said he'd be giving information about their activities to the security board and claimed that when they held him and questioned him, the IRA said informers who don't come forward can expect no mercy. The IRA's internal security unit, known as the Nutting Squad, meted out its own brand of justice in darkened rooms with no jury, witnesses or defence. Those who took the stand already knew what verdict would be passed, with confession secured by their barbaric inquisitors. I was arrested last July on a number of assault charges brought to Bambridge Police Station. During this interview with the police, I told them the names of local members of the IRA was what I was involved with. They, uh, they gave me a, a contact number. I contacted them five to six times. Then I broke off contact. But with at least one of those sitting in judgment, a top agent himself, how many were killed to protect these agents' true identities? How many murders were sanctioned by their British paymasters? And did the intelligence services shield informers within the IRA from murder charges? They had the paramilitary groups, all of them, infiltrated at every level from top to bottom. They knew what was going on. They didn't prevent many, many murders. Uh, and they didn't help to detect any of those murders. Uh, and it seems to me that they thought intelligence was more important than the right to life. The people within the intelligence community that were driving this and that were fueling it and that were playing, playing, you know, the, the, the issue of life and death with people, the, to the extent that everybody was expendable. I think they got down uh, into the, 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 the pit along with the, uh, the paramilitaries. And it's come out that some of their agents were controlling paramilitary organisations. informing. It was a crime which warranted the most savage of deaths. Bodies were dumped in a warning to others. The method of torture during their final hours clearly visible. These victims were not the only ones silenced. So too were their families. Such was the stigma of being branded an informer. But some families are now starting to speak out. Why? It's all because of this man, Freddy Scappatici. For years, he was a senior figure in the IRA's nutting squad, sitting on the kangaroo court charged with weeding out the agents. In 2003, he was amassed as a top agent, codenamed Steakknife, a claim he denies. But four years on, and prompted by new collusion revelations, the fallout to his double life is still unravelling. Tonight, Inside investigates this murky world, and we talk to families, some for the first time, who demand answers. Their common link? Scapatici. IRA man Vincent Robinson knew Scapatici well. Both had lived in South Belfast before moving to neighbouring districts in the west of the city. Like many Republicans, it was not unusual for Robinson to be away from home for days on end. Last seen on the 24th of June 1981, he did turn up two days later, but not alive. His body had been shoved down a rubbish chute in the Divots Flats West Belfast. It was an all too familiar sight, which clearly pointed to the nutting squad. He had um, two gunshot wounds to the head. Half of his ear was missing. He had a lot of bruising. We had been hit, beaten with something, um, but of a gun or something, some object. His eyes were also taped. And he was on his knees was his, at the time. His injuries were horrific. I wouldn't, wouldn't like anyone to see their father land the cop. Eileen was only nine when her father was murdered. Although too young to understand, she still felt the pain of her loss. I remember coming out of the house when his body was getting brought out to go to the chapel to be buried. Um, a lot of people sat in the street watching. 
just a lot of hurt then. Growing up, Eileen was shielded from the full extent of the IRA's brutality towards her father. It was only in the last 18 months that she saw the injuries inflicted for herself, captured on camera in the aftermath of his death. I ended up taking an nervous breakdown when I seen them. And my family had to come to my home because I was in a bad way. And every night for weeks and weeks after it, closing my eyes to go to sleep and I just kept seeing the photographs and the photographs over and over. What are your feelings towards the IRA? I hate them. I hate them for what they've done, for taking them. At the end of the day, he, they left me without a father, my brother without a father, my, ch my children and my brother's children without a grandfather. For the IRA, Vincent Robinson did deserve such a death. It claimed he was paid six pounds a day by his special branch handlers for information. Robinson was the third alleged informant murdered during the first six months of that year. The IRA was leaking like a sieve, but from where? Little did its leadership know, this went to the top of the nutting squad. So my father was killed to cover someone else's back, and I think that person is ready to come to the mother of six has had several contacts with the IRA. Her most recent meeting was last year. We're in a circle with them. So I went different times to have meetings to sit down. They're telling me he was an, an IRA informer. But Eileen says light has been shed on her father's murder by the police team set up to review over 3,000 killings spanning the history of the Troubles. And they have told me that my father was not an IRA informer. They have to run back, they have checked files and different stuff, and he is never an IRA informer. Another family is still in talks with the Provisionals and Sinn Féin leader Gerry Adams. Bomb maker Anthony McKernan was in the IRA for more than 15 years. He lived in the Markets district of South Belfast, where Scapatici had previously lived. McKernan left home on the 18th of January, 1988. Scapatici had sent for him. Less than 24 hours later, McKernan's body was found, dumped in an alleyway in Beechmount, West Belfast. The IRA alleged he was an informer, a claim his family have strongly rejected. He accepted that he could have been murdered by the British Army. He also know, knew that he could be murdered by loyalists. Um, he didn't expect to be took out by his, his own um, and under the, the dirty name that they left with him. At the time, McKernan's widow Patricia had her suspicions as to why he was murdered. Whatever she knew, she took it to the grave. They're liars. They're just liars. He was never an informer. Never an informer and they know it well as, as I know it. To me, the IRA is trying to cover up for one of their own that has been an informer. They were using a scapegoat. Um, there were a married couple, obviously he had told her something when she was quite confident to be able to say that. It was in, in my father's wake that my mother was able to say that. Um, also, um, members of the movement came to the wake and they also stated that too, the, their concerns that it was no way he was an informer and, you know, it was some, they believed it was somebody bigger. McKernan was shot four times in the head, but he was plied with enough drink to kill him. I mean, most informers or any I've ever heard of were stripped down so they can't get forensic on their clothing. I mean, these people were confident enough to leave down to their very, the very gloves. And I mean, so I'd say British collusion there too. I mean, who's going to question the head of the nothing squad? Who's going to question somebody so far up the ladder in the IRA? It has emerged two senior IRA men, Daniel McCann and Brendan Ruby Davison, visited the McKernans just weeks after the murder. None of the two of them believed that my father was an informer and that they were both going to try 
and um, they would help us, basically, they would help us. But nothing happened. Davison and McCann were killed in controversial circumstances just months later. McCann was one of three unarmed IRA personnel shot dead by the SAS in Gibraltar on March the 6th. The European Court later ruled the triple murders unlawful. On July 25th, Brandon Davison was murdered at his home in the markets by UVF gunmen dressed in RUC uniforms. Collusion claims are currently under investigation by the police ombudsman, but allegations also persist that Davison was an informer. Yet his name remains on the IRA's rule of honour in the markets. The provisionals clearly don't believe he was. I would believe there's a connection with all three killings, yeah. There were three people who Skepatishi would have had known well and had links with. Well, my view has always been that the truth is stranger than fiction here in the north of Ireland. Uh, the British government need to come clean as well. Pat McCarthy is also from the markets and knew both McKernan and Scapatici. Well, it's like every working class area, be it loyalist or, or nationalist, everyone knew who everyone was in, in those areas. Anthony was dedicated to his own beliefs and I never believed he was an informer. I'm a builder by trade and when I was on the totals, I'd have worked in some of the same jobs that Freddie worked on. You didn't want to cross Freddie. That, you know, no one would have wanted to fall out with them. Scapatici is one of at least two informers linked to the triple murder of former IRA men Johnny Dignam, Aidan Stars and Gregory Burns. Their executions came at the end of a 10-year hunt for an IRA mole in South Armagh. The trio, who had been implicated in the disappearance of Portadown woman Margaret Perry, had been missing for several days. Their naked bodies were found at separate locations on the border on July the 1st, 1992. Well, there was one left eye was missing. The right eye was, he thought it blew up a bicycle pump. No way known if it was an eye there or not. And his nose was broken. I mean, put all over the place. Like I've seen dead people many times before. I've never seen anybody in the condition he was in. I hope never again. Margaret Perry was discovered in a shallow grave in County Sligo, hours before Burns, Stars and Dignam. The civil servant, an ex-girlfriend of Burns, had been missing for over a year. The girl didn't deserve the day the way she did. She put a vote in on her. As well as linking the men to Margaret's murder, the IRA alleged all three worked for British intelligence. Burns, it claimed, worked for MI5 for more than a decade, while the other two were recruited by Special Branch during the period Margaret was missing. Why was this vulnerable, innocent young woman killed? It appears she may have known too much. Well, it's my understanding that uh, one of the three men involved had been working for the Force Research Unit and that he had told them that he had told her that he was protected in all his criminal activities because he was working for the security forces. Uh, and instead of um, doing as he asked, which was to uh, really get him out of the situation and get his, his associates out of the situation, they told him to deal with it himself. Um, and he seemed to have come to the conclusion that the only way to deal with it was to murder her. But they did nothing to prevent it, and they knew that that's what he was thinking. I think that the Force Research Unit knew all about the circumstances which led to her murder and ultimately to the, the murder of the three young men as well. Unlike the McKernan and Robinson families, the IRA sent the Dignams a tip. Ian Stars told me that he killed her. He says, I'm not joking you. I killed her. I've done her in. So he showed me the place where the girl was buried. At a later stage, Ian Stars and Gregory Bourne told me that they were going back up to the grave. They said they were going up to remove any dental. 
cases of was of the gear. Uh, after they came back, the admin told me that he had a the, the, the skull or armor. Uh, which I, I believe to be it done it now. <coughs> Murder is murder. It's never acceptable in any circumstances. Uh, and whatever part John Dignam may have played in Margaret Perry's murder, and as I understand it, it was actually only a very minor part, he should have stood trial in a court of law. He should not have been brought before a kangaroo court uh, and murdered. Arian and Pat say the IRA had no right to act as judge and executioner. I wish I could say the one that done face to face and ask him, has he any sort? And <sighs> Sorry about that. I hate the person that done it and the people that was actually involved over who gave the orders to be, for it to be done and I'll never forget them. I mean, Mrs. Perry was pined in the streets looking for her daughter, mm -hmm. and your son possibly knew where she'd been buried. I, I don't know what to think about that. She could have saved a lot of anguish. The police ombudsman has just launched an investigation into claims their son was killed to protect Scapatici. Well, if Johnny Dignam and the others who buy for, were farmers are bound to have handlers, and who are the handlers? They work for the government. So whoever who the handler was, was bound to know that Margaret Perry was dead, and bound to know where she was buried. I think all the murders could have been prevented. Margaret's mother, Mary, declined to take part in this programme, but she did give inside a statement. I know Margaret's death could have been prevented. I am appalled and greatly distressed by the turn of events 16 years on. No inquiry or civil action will bring Margaret home to us, and in respect to her memory, I wish to let her rest in peace. Surely no one can blame me for that. I'd say I was sorry, I'd to bring it all out, but there's only way we're going to get anywhere. The families of murdered Republicans accept that given their loved ones past, public sympathy may be in short supply. His own people should not have took his own life without proof, without giving us proof. And yeah, I can sympathise with people who is going to say he deserved it. Your son's left lying on, on the edge of a road like a dog and you can't get the right explanation why he was left like that. I think any mother would, would need to know. I mean, the end of the day, me and my brother never done nothing. We were just left to suffer. And suffer their consequences. Coupled with their loss, they had to carry the burden that comes with being branded a tight. In the McKernan's household, one brother's run-in with the provisionals ended in more tragedy. It began when he was a teenager. She almost put out the country with a few other boys that friends of his. Um, he went to Birmingham. He came back. And just from then, the IRA tortured him. Sean ended up, we brought him home because he needed psychiatric help. He had nervous breakdowns and everything. Um, Sean died in his sleep on the 7th of February, 2000, year 2000, due to going off his medication. Very mentally tortured, that kid. And I blame the Ari too on his death. To me, he would be around today if they had a left him alone. Through my school years I was tortured, my brother was tortured, um, going through his school years too, 
people, other kids, your daddy was an informer, your daddy was this, your daddy was that. I mean, it, it just it set me off the rails, thinking of what people thought of him. As we know only too well in Northern Ireland, the truth is a hard nut to crack. All the key players in this sinister affair are silent. The IRA's enforcers have now been decommissioned. Although they may never face the courts, nor will the intelligence services who sanctioned murder to shield more valued informers. As for Scapatici, he's protected by this court order. It prevents the media from soliciting any information to track him down and challenge him on the serious allegations he faces. Scapatici's solicitor told us his client strenuously denies involvement in any of these murders and again rejects claims he was at any time an informer for the security services. And I do, you know, I do believe that, that the Republicans, you know, it's A, it's in their interest to deal with this issue. And I think more importantly, B, is that I think that they want to deal with it uh, uh, in a positive way. And, 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 and they want to give resolution as best as they can uh, to those families. Eileen Robinson's plea to the IRA is simple. All I want from them is a statement saying that my father was not a former or an apology from him. That's all I'm looking for. What we want from the IRA is an apology or the truth. And what we want from the Ombudsman is to, to find out, we've no doubt that Scapatissi was involved in my father's murder, but what we want from her is to the state cooperate as well. If the British wanted rid of my father, there was legal ways to go about it. Why not arrest him? Why not lock him up? I mean, it's equally wrong to, for them to murder him because of his role in the IRA. I mean, murder's murder, no matter what. And what about Scapatici? He may have disappeared, but his victims' families haven't. And this demand should be brought to justice for what he's done. Not only for my father's murder, but for the rest of those people that have been murdered under him. His handlers should be brought to justice. To stand in the courts. And they all should be uh, prosecuted for what they've done. I believe, in fact, that the Republican movement was more deeply infiltrated than the Loyalist movement because they were seen as the enemy by the British security forces. Um, they were the people who were trying to destabilise the status quo uh, and trying to bring about a united Ireland. Uh, and it seems to me logical that the intelligence services would have wanted to infiltrate them and find out what they were doing. Um, so I think we haven't seen anything yet of the full picture.